So hello and welcome back to the Manchester United FIFA 20 career mode. We are back in action. We're back better than ever for season two. What a season it was last year. We just finished off the season finale. So if you went ahead and missed that, make sure to go and check it out. It is on the channel. That was an absolutely crazy, just the perfect way, the icing on top of this Manchester United cake to finish off the last season. So BCHD's first in in charge. We go into season two even stronger. We go in with even more momentum. This time around, we have 282 million pounds to spend in the transfer market. We're going to be ruthless. We're going on a damn shopping spree here in the summer transfer window. 285 million in the bank. That is what you want to see here at Manchester United. Our manager rating is still 66, which is so weird. Maybe it was because we didn't go too far in the Europa League. But this year, it is a different ball game. Let me tell you that we have UEFA Champions League action. We're going to find out our group stage. Hopefully, we find out who we're drawing against this episode. The board want us to win the cup. I don't don't know if we could do that they also want us to win the FA Cup like we did last year they want us to do the bloody treble we did the domestic treble last year but this year can we go ahead and actually win the proper treble including the Champions League trophy it is gonna be a very challenging task but trophies seem to be the main objective here at Manchester United we failed our youth development objectives last year also need to earn 342 million pounds through media earnings competition prize money within three seasons so that's a long term goal continental of course is to win the champions league and they want us to win all that there's no financial objective so it's just trophies we just need to get the results i think we could do it with this team and also with the type of players we're about to bring in so if you go ahead and enjoy the video if you're hyped for season two make sure to slap the like button down below hit subscribe and turn on notifications for more fifa 20 content the two FIFA 20 series, such as the Brescia Road to Glory, and of course, this Manchester United career mode. Comment down below what signings and what suggestions you have going into January, going into the later parts of Season 2 for the brand new season. So BCHD's got himself a bit of a makeover. He's gone with a bit of a change of an outfit, a bit of a change of a hairstyle. And yeah, we're just taking a fresh new approach, a fresh new look into Season 2. And so BCHD is ready to do the treble. Just take a look at him in all his glory. But this is the squad we have, and we definitely need to improve our depth this season. We're competing in more competitions. We're competing in the Champions League, which is way better than Europa League and our our bench right now is just not looking up to par. We also have our pre-contract arrival in Guerrero, so he will definitely help in terms of depth. I might just automatically chuck him on the bench. Let me know if he should start over Luke Shaw, the Portuguese midfielder and left back. He provides a bit of versatility as well. That's why I've got him in here. He's a bit of a utility man. And the Portuguese man, he arrives from Borussia Dortmund on a free. We could not resist that. He is fitting into that United shirt very well. And we also have the gold Premier League patches on the sleeve. So that's a nice little addition reminding everyone that we are the champions. So midfield, we obviously need another striker. We need a few position. We literally need need another upgrade in every position just like last season as well we also have our preseason tournament in which we could get even more money in the transfer budget from and this is our current training setup for season two greenwood's back he's better than ever and we've got him on three training drills here so i'm expecting some exponential growth from the young english striker considering he picked up a nasty injury towards the end of season one he's got a bit of training to catch up on as well as chong and gomez making their return to the training setup so we're going to simulate or let me know who to train and what people you want in the training sessions down below now the central midfield is somewhere which we need to improve especially depth wise and quality someone with champions league experience that i really admire not in fifa uh, but in real life as well it is fabian ruiz coming from napoli the spanish midfielder it's a no-brainer i want to go after him he won't be as expensive as some other midfield options so Fabian will be our first summer transfer target. All right, so BCHD with his brand new look is back in the nightclub and we're facing Carlo Ancelotti here. We've got 285 million, so we can we can splash the cash here, but I want to put a, a straight up offer of 55 million to see what the Italian has to say. 67, we could lower that. We know about BCHD's uh, transfer tactics, his transfer negotiation skills, they're second to none. And there we go, 60 million pounds. I think that's a pretty decent deal. Let's get that over the line. And here he is entering the Manchester United offices. Old Trafford has come calling and the Spaniard 
Cannot resist this opportunity. He's finally going to make the big move away from Napoli. I've heard a lot of good things about him, and I love just his play style, the way he controls and dominates the game. We're going to lock him down on a five-year contract. The Spaniard does not want a release clause, and no, we're not going to end negotiations. We're going to accept that. I am, yeah, more than happy to accept that. I don't see... Uh, 15 goals, he probably won't get that, but an 820k signing bonus. Welcome on in, Fabian Ruiz, our first signing of Season 2. The Spanish midfielder coming from Napoli. Welcome to Old Trafford, mate. Let's get this party started. And for some reason, there's no cutscene, but it's announced in the news. We've gotten him, we've gotten our man, Fabian Ruiz has arrived here. He's become a red devil and that has improved our midfield second to none. 60 million pounds for the 24 year old. I am more than a happy son. He can play at CDM. He can play at Cam and he can also play at CM. So he can pretty much play anywhere in central midfield, which is just why I love him so much. Four star skill moves, four star weak foot. He's a left footed player, six foot two. He's got medium, medium work rates. He's going to be a workhorse in the midfield. Also has 86 attack positioning, 87 reactions, 85 vision. Dark greens are just something to who gets so excited for 87 ball control as well as 85 dribbling 84 finishing for a midfielder is very high as well he is a long shot taker so i'm looking to score some left foot bangers with him from outside the box in terms of the transfer list this season we're going to try to get rid of as much dead wood as possible i know they are young and up and coming players but at the end of the day they're just not manchester united quality james gunner i will keep Joel Pereira, yeah, your time is now. You, you should be out of the club, mate. A Fossu meant some kind of thinking about, but he could be a great backup player too. Dean Henderson has decent potential and could be a great backup goalkeeper. Scott McTominay, I'm on the verge. I don't know about him. And Marcus Rojo, yeah, I think, yeah, 30 years of age now. He should be at the club. And with this brand new signing of Fabian Ruiz, I don't think the Scotsman has that much time left at Old Trafford now. So... I'm really tempted to put him on the transfer list and sell him, to be honest. As Romero approaches 33 now, a backup goalkeeper could be required, so we'll always keep an eye out on that. But for now, he does a job for us. So this is a squad going to play our preseason games. It is pretty much the second team, plus Fabian Ruiz, and we've also got Guerrero, the pre-contract signing, as well as Greenwood is making his return up top. So let's see if we can get a result here against Atletico Madrid. Three points in the bag. It will be a hat-trick for Gomez, the English midfielder. He grew plus 11 overall last season, and I'm sure he is going to have a brilliant second season. So the transfer offer comes in for Marcos Rojo, and yeah, the Argentine defender. Times now, he hasn't really got much time left at Old Trafford. He's 78 overall, 30 years of age. He's just not United quality, and he's not going to be the type of player to help us win the trebles. However, the Brazilian midfielder, Andres Pereira, 80 overall, 24 Spurs want him. I don't really want to sell him to our direct Premier League rival, so for now, we'll go ahead and reject that. In terms of a Marcos Rojo replacement, it looks like Ruben Diaz could be the perfect centre-back. Watford are after him, so... I want to snatch him from their fingertips. And now he's only 23. He's a solid player. And he also has power header as a trait. 23 years of age. Coming from Portugal. From Benfica. He was also kind of linked in real life, I believe. So I want to go ahead and buy him. He could be a perfect backup center back. 28.3 million pounds. Let's see what Benfica have to say. They still want over 30 million pounds. 30 million on the dot. Come on, Benfica. They're going to go ahead and accept that. Let's go into contract talks. Here we are. We're in the contract negotiations now. We've gotten the teapots out. They're back for season two as well. The restaurant is looking as clean as ever. Back in the restaurant, the most efficient place to talk about transfers. And he's going to be an important team member. He's not going to get the start. Uh, he's, not de he's definitely not going to start for us, but... He will definitely get some game time under his belt. We're going to accept that five-year contract he is proposing. That is something we are very interested in. He's going to have no release clause. What is the Portuguese defender going to say to that? And they are happy. We might have overpaid for him in terms of wages, but Ruben Diaz, welcome to the Premier League, son. You're at your new club. Now, especially after Rojo's gone, now especially that we need some more defensive reinforcement. Ruben Diaz was the perfect pickup, and now for 30 million pounds, a 23-year-old, he can still grow and develop into this Manchester United side. He's linking up with his former teammate in Victor Lindelof. Our second signing of the window so far, the Portuguese giant has become a red devil and we also have a promising debut from Fabian, so that signing seems to be paying off as well. Guangzhou is our second opponent in pre-season. The second team is out for this one as well. It's a 2-1 win. Pereira and Gomez on the score sheet to get the 2-1 victory. Alright, third match of pre-season now up against Borussia Dortmund. We've got the same starting 11 out for this one. 
and surely it is Greenwood with a double. There we go, another 2-1 victory, and we're through to the next round. So here we are, semi-finals. Real Madrid are going to meet us in the second game, in our third game, and now Pereira and Guerrero get the double. The pre-contract signing from left-back gets two. We get a transfer offer in for Leon Bailey, and we just picked him up last transfer window. We just picked him up in season one, so he's going nowhere, as well as a loan offer for Fosu Mensa. I'd rather sell him than loan him out, so Hoffenheim aren't getting that. So so bad news, Taith Chong has picked up a groin injury and he's going to be out for six weeks. So we can't go a preseason without getting an injury. So unfortunately for the Dutch winger, he's going to be on the sidelines. So the final up against Juventus. Let's get this win. Let's get some more money in the transfer budget to spend. And oh no, Juventus, 4-3 on penalties. It's Pereira with the goal, but the Brazilian equalizers and cancels out Pereira's opener, and we're going to lose 3.69 million. At least it's something. So a lot of you guys have been calling out for this one in the comments down below to train up Daniel James, and that's exactly what we're going to do here now that Ty Chong is injured. It is Greenwood up to a 76 before the season has even kicked off. And the next two positions we're after is another right midfielder and also a backup striker. So... I'm thinking Jao Felix, I'm thinking Jaden Sancho, some of the most promising players in world football. We need to go out and make a statement, so Jaden Sancho. I know heaps of people have signed this guy, but it just makes the most sense. It does, and it's kind of realistic as well. United will probably be going after this guy in real life, so we're going to do so here in FIFA 20 career mode. 60 million pounds, Borussia Dortmund won 87 million. I do not blame them for that. Uh, let's go ahead and say 66 million pounds. Come on, Dortmund. Give us a favor. No, they're still sticking with that 87. 70 million. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. What have you got for me? They're going to have to think about it as well. And there's another deal that I did off camera that you guys didn't see. I was just testing the waters here. It's Yuri Tillemans. Get another backup midfielder. However, he's a career mode legend. He's been a career mode legend for so many years now. From Leicester City, we went and offered Andreas Pereira plus 20 million pounds for the Belgian. So we'll see if that one goes through. He was kind of linked with United in real life too. So... That one could be a bit realistic. All right, 72 million for Jaden Sancho. And we have a deal here with Bruce Dortmund. They are willing to accept that. And now let's go into transfer talks with him. This is going to be a big one. They rejected the 70 million, but now for 72 million. And as well with Yuri Tillemans, they wanted 23.2 million plus Andreas Pereira. I will happily accept that one for Yuri Tillemans. So there's two contract talks to be done here. So contract negotiations will be done here. Let's see. Jaden Sancho was getting 85k a week. So we'll delegate both contracts and hopefully. Both those deals go through. And here's some more training. Angel Gomez has now gone up to an 80. He's cracked into the 80 overalls. And he's proven to be one of our most promising youth prospects right now. And there we go. The Sancho deal has finally gone through. A player which so many guys wanted me to sign. And now we've finally gone ahead and pulled the trigger. We've had to bite the bullet. He's definitely going to start. 72 million pounds. He's going to be a marquee signing for us. And has potential to be special. And I cannot wait to start playing with this guy. I feel like he's going to add some more firepower to that attack. And after his youth days at Manchester City. He's become a red devil. He's gone to the other side of town. He's gone to the red side of Manchester and rightfully so Jaden Sancho is now a United player rest assured we also went ahead and picked up Yuri Tielemans the Belgian midfielder it's a like for like swap with Andreas Pereira he is going the other way to Leicester City I know I said I didn't want to sell him to Premier League rivals but when there's a player like Yuri Tielemans up for grabs definitely going to go ahead and pick up the Belgian he's just a career mode legend and I couldn't help myself he would actually be a solid signing for United in real life and I really want to use him this year in career mode so our midfield and our defense this transfer window as well as our attack with Jaden Sancho has improved the second to none. Victor Lindelof, yeah, he's staying at United. No way Real Madrid are getting their hands on him. We are just two days out from our Community Shield match up against Liverpool and it looks like no more transfer business will be done. Eric Bailly wants to start and will consider it but we'll go into our first press conference of season two. The Community Shield is up for grabs, some pre-season silverware and we're starting to talk about our brand new signings. He will be good for the team young Jaden Sancho and he'll prove he's the right man Ruben Diaz as well Yuri Tillemans in there as we've done so much transfer business right before this Community Shield match and I've completely forgotten about the Community Shield it's a derby it's always a big game up against Liverpool and that is going to be our starting 11 in there Jaden Sancho has already gone up one overall both Fabian and Ruben Diaz are on the bench as well as our pre-contract signing in Guerrero Tielemans has already gone up an overall so he might even get the spot over James Madison his former Leicester 
the team, mate. But as we go into this match at Wembley, we have 98 million pounds to spend. This is where you guys come in. Let me know down below. We also have a few sales to do as well, so that amount could go up. Just think 100 million pounds. Who should we get? Let me know your top priorities. I was thinking Jao Felix as well. I just want your guys' input on the last few transfer signings, and then we'll finish off the transfer window in episode 2 on deadline day. So let me know any last minute transfers that you guys want me to make. But whether or not you love it or hate it, it's Community Shield time. We're at Wembley against Liverpool. It's something we always want to win, and it's just some more silverware to be added to the collection. So let's go into this one against the Merseyside boys. I've got Luka Modric in their sides. Oh, that could be an interesting matchup, but here we are. Wembley has come calling. Let's get it. So we've been here before. Wembley has come calling again, and we've been so successful on this pitch in the Carabao Cup final, the FA Cup final against our other bit of rivals in Manchester City, and now Liverpool await us in the Community Shield. That is the preseason silverware that is awaiting us. Hopefully, we can get the victory and start off season two right. The Rio Ferdinand Tifo is out for this one. I'm surprised they let them bring that into Wembley. Jaden Sancho will be making his debut. Oh, we forgot to change his number. He's the number 32. Let me know down in the comments what numbers we should change the new signings into. Sancho's got the 32. He's definitely not going to be having that throughout the rest of season two. All right, so it's going to be Marcus Rashford to kick us off. You have Sadio Mane, the number 10. Wamba Saka's completely flipped him over, but won the ball fairly. Wamba Saka continues to make this buccaneering run down the right-hand side. He's going to go all the way. He will, the number 29. He's having a field day down this right-hand side. He whips the ball in, and it's nearly an own goal from Koulibaly. What a win back from Jaden Sancho. That is the fighting spirit we need in Season 2. Rashford will do a little one too. Oh, this is poetry in motion. The English connection. Surely Jaden Sancho on debut. Skied that one over the bar, but that is what we want to see. A beautiful piece of play, a beautiful piece of football. And the lads are already starting to gel together with the new signing. Oh no, Mo Salah into the box now. Roberto Firmino, what a block. Luka Modric, former Ballon d'Or winner. And the Croatian... Through on goal. What do we do? The number 35, David Deja saves. And Mo Salah goes for the extraordinary. But he skies it over the bar. The Egyptian. Now can he find the ball through to Martial? He will. The Frenchman is dominating down this left-hand side. Oh, he missed the ball. But Marcus Rashford. And it's just gone wide. Luke Shaw just keeping the Egyptian in his pocket this game. That is what you want to see. But no, we've given it away. Poor Pogba. That wasn't part of the script, mate. Modric goes for the header, and it's just above. Luka Modric just dictating the tempo, dictating the midfield. And Paul Pogba had enough of that run. He got a victory over him in the World Cup final. He also got a victory over him there. But now Jadon Sancho, he's in the clear here. He'll cross it in. And now that's an unmarked Kai Havertz at the back. But Allison, with a brilliant stop, denies us of the opener. The Merseyside club are very dangerous, and Genie Wijnaldum continues their attacking endeavours. And it's a big right-hand save from David De Gea, who responds to Allison's save well. Now back to Paul Pogba, he'll cut it back and breeze past the Liverpool player. Back to Havertz, back to Rashford. Rashford will find Jaden Sancho on debut. There we go. It was all that pressure, all those chances. And the number 32 will definitely change his number. But he gets a debut goal on debut for Manchester United. That is the first of many, surely. And it was slipped in by Marcus Rashford, our top goal scorer turn provider. It was just a patient bit of build-up, a patient bit of tiki-taka play. And the Liverpool defence, they were attacking. It was end-to-end -end stuff. And it's been a very exciting Community Shield final, to say the least. Klopp triggered on the sidelines. You just love to see it. Uh-oh. Mo Salah. But a brilliant save from David De Gea. World class from the Spaniard in net. Back to Pogba. Now Rashford sees the run of Anthony Martial. The Frenchman is through on goal. He can he get our second note. Allison with another brilliant one-on-one -on -one stop. Mane. Oh. He has breezed past Juan Basaka there. And now... It is Jimenez tries to go for him, and David De Gea denies Liverpool of their much-deserved equaliser. Oh, some nice bit of trickery there, and Marcus Rashford wants a long shot. Alisson will deny him. It was a good effort at the end of the day. That in Mane. It's a big header in. No, it is Alexander-Arnold. Pogba clears the danger. We can't clear the ball. What is going on here, lads? Liverpool, their constant pressure pays off, and their Egyptian Mo Salah will get the equaliser. He'll prey on this Wembley pitch, and they deserved it in the end, but our defence here was absolutely shocking. Pogba won it back. He tried to clear it, we lose it, Shaw wins it, and he loses it to Mo Salah. Pogba tries to go in for the slide, Martial tries to go in for the slide, and now we're in danger here. Liverpool, they want to push on and get the winner. 
And don't, they do not want this to go to extra time. Now Mo Salah. Paul Pogba will come across. Back to Origi. They are playing like absolute freaks at the moment. And it's Fabinho to get the goal. The Brazilian central defensive midfielder. He pushed up. And Liverpool have clawed their way to the winner. 82 minutes in. We made our subs as well. There we go. The subs are on. We didn't get the chance to make them as Liverpool went ahead and scored. But Mad uh, Fabian comes on. Uh-oh. Liverpool. They are not resting on their laurels here. Sadio Mane. He's trying to get the third back. Sweats it across to Fabinho. Caught very cold and Fabinho makes us pay. David Ayer literally palmed it into his own net. And it ends up in the top left-hand corner. The Brazilian. It was a poor shot in the end. David De Gea helped it in. And that is not going to help our cause. 3-1 to Liverpool. Well, I'm just going to take that defeat on the chin. It's still pre-season at the end of the day. The community shield is not part of the treble. And it was just a chance. Oh my god, Jurgen Klopp. How tall is he over us? Oh, that was not a good defeat to take. After being 1-0 up for so long. Same problem we had last season. We can't get that second goal to just finish off the match. We go 1-0 up. And we rest on our laurels. We're just unable to get the second no matter how many chances. And we allow the other team to crawl back into the game. And that's exactly what Liverpool did. Fabinho makes the difference at the end of the day. Like I said, it's the community shield. We're going to win the important ones this season like the Champions League, mate. We got the victory over them in the Premier League last year. So that's all that really matters. Anyways, lessons to be learned. Especially it's still a young and an inexperienced side. Put that loss behind us and just go into the season with a fresh new approach. Let's talk a bit about the new signings. They're not too happy as of yet, but hopefully the morale will continue. And look at that. The theme is back. The Premier League is just around the corner. Transfer offer for Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Yeah, he was absolutely electric in that game against Liverpool despite our loss. However, Man City come in for him. He's no way going to go and be a citizen. So, yet the ad comes calling. We're going to deny that. So, this is how we start off our Premier League season. We've got an opener against Watford at home. We have Leeds recently promoted for the championship away at Elland Road. And then we have Arsenal at home and also Norwich at home. So, that is, what, three out of four home games at Old Trafford. I'm looking forward to that. We might play a few Premier League games in this first episode, despite how much transfer business we get done. But that is going to be the squad heading out towards this Watford match. We will simulate it at home. We all know how much Old Trafford is a fortress for us. So is it going to be an opening day win? There we go. Havertz, Martial with a brace. And Rashford is on the score sheet to get three points and that 4-0 victory. More training here. And Greenwood is up another overall. He is now at a 77. Beautiful growth going on from the English youngster. And it's always a big match up against Leeds United. Man United and Leeds have a strong history, a very strong history. And it's a strong derby that... Hasn't been played for quite some time now. So now that they're promoted to the Premier League, I do in fact want to go in and play this one. It'll be the final game of episode one, season two. We're going to try and go back to back in the Premier League with another three points here away from home. And look at the rivalry continues to this day. And we'll go in with the black kit there. Leeds will wear their famous old white strip. It's a classic English rivalry returning in the Premier League. And we're live at Elland Road. It's going to be a massive away trip. Both sets of fans absolutely hate each other. And it's going to be a ripper of a match. I definitely did want to play this one. It's a rivalry that goes back in the day. Back in the 90s, 80s, I want to say. It was a massive game in English football. And now that Leeds are back in the top division... We can take them on in the Premier League. Now that we want to redeem ourselves after that Community Shield humiliation against another one of our rivals in Liverpool. And here is our Leeds United lineup. It is Casilla in goal. Dallas, Ailing, Manka, and Cooper are the back four. We'll see their midfield is going to be a Douglas in that central defensive pivot position. And it's Phillips, Forshaw, Klitsch, and Aloiski. Aloiski? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And Patrick Bamford up top. So a very beatable side. And we need no introductions for our lads. I still haven't changed Sancho's number. He's still going to be a 32, but it's the same 11 that went out against Watford and Liverpool. Martial wins the ball back. We can already see a nice little run from Marcus Rashford. We'll try and fool the Leeds United defense. Kai Havertz is already in on goal. And Kai Havertz gets a goal straight away to stun Leeds United here. Who runs straight to the traveling away fans. And it's a first goal, our first chance. And it's that man again, Kai Havertz. I cannot talk more highly of this lad as Marcus Rashford did a little heel to heel. He squared it off to Kai Havertz in our first chance, our first goal. Leeds definitely caught off guard. And it's a nice little welcome back to the Premier League for them. As Havertz will smash that one into the bottom right hand corner for his first of season two. The Jaden Sancho is going to go in a bit of a run here. He wants another goal. He wants his first goal in the Premier League. 
He'll cut back inside. He'll give it off to Kai Havertz again in the middle. But Eiling was there to block. And I'll get a hold of the ball right now. Bielsa's got them playing some beautiful football. And it's through to Patrick Bamford. Through to four, sure. But David De Gea gets his hand to it. It'll we'll clear that away with Jimenez. But it won't get through. We've blocked it. Why has he done that? Oh, my God. No, 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 no. What is happening? It's We're falling apart at the back. He's on a rampaging run. The number six will smash it straight at Casilla. Darting run. Now Martial finds that through to Kai Havertz. He'll cut it back. He'll wait for a runner. Imalinkovic, Savage, and Casilla with the save. Sancho can put that into an open net, but he's offside. Run from Sancho now. Surely this is the second back post. And there we go. Rashford gets his first of the season. I think it's his second of the season. He scored in that Watford game. And he is on track for another record-breaking season in the Premier League. Like a hot knife through butter, Malikovic Savage with a defense-splitting pass. And Sancho gets a Premier League assist. It was Havertz with the cheeky little dummy run. And the number 10 does the job at the back post. That is going to be half time. We're going to the break. 2-0 up. Sancho. Now Wamba Saka. Oh, the Leeds defense straight off kickoff. Have been caught cold. That was a terrible shot from Wamba Saka. We go Kai Havertz. Through to Marcus Rashford again. Always a danger. Oh, that is a beautiful piece of skill, but the finish doesn't follow up. Back into the middle with Malinkovic Savic. He'll give it off. Havertz. Oh, this is lovely stuff. The Serbian has charged forward and deserves a goal, but Casillo with a brilliant save. Surely we can keep the clean sheet here, lads. Roberts through on goal. Oh, no. Leeds United. They want to get a goal back. They want to have the deficit, but it's a massive block from our Uruguayan. Here we go. The perfect chance for Leeds to get one back. Jimenez on the line. Jimenez on the line. And it's the post to deny them. And that is going to be full time. A comfortable 2-0 victory. We did most of the work in the first half there. So the second half, we cruise to the three points. And we get the job done here away at Ellen Road. There's two Premier League wins in a row. Another three points as we go ahead after that Premier League trophy. It is early days here, but we're getting the important wins against these smaller sides. And yeah, I feel like that is the perfect way to end off episode one of season two. We're back better than ever. The new signings are gelling in well. We deal with the Community Shield. However, we've started off the Premier League right. We have 115 million pounds to spend. So let me know down in the comments below how we should finish off this summer transfer window and what other signings we should make with the rest of our transfer funds or should we save some for January? Let me know down below. But if you did go on to enjoy this episode and are keen for season two of the Manchester United and Brescia Road to Glory, make sure to smack a like on it down below. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications for more FIFA 20 career mode content. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Comment down below your suggestions. You know how it is. I've been BCHG. Hopefully you did enjoy. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you on episode two.